Before you attempt to make dimethylamine, you should keep in mind that this chemical is restricted in some countries and you must look up the regulations yourself. The chemicals for this preparation are quite simple. We need DMF, sodium hydroxide and distilled water. The DMF is the most important reagent in this preparation. Why? Well, we want dimethylamine and DMF already contains that dimethylamine group. DMF is also known as dimethylformamide. Using some chemical magic, it is possible to split it into formate and dimethylamine. I put on some gloves and now I'm ready to begin. A little more than 40 grams of sodium hydroxide, 45 grams to be precise, were weighed out. There's actually two ways to get dimethylamine from DMF. I chose to use saponification because I get free base dimethylamine without any extra step. The other route involves the hydrolysis of the DMF. It produces dimethyl ammonium chloride, which is the salt of dimethylamine and I don't want that. To continue, a stirfish was added to the sodium hydroxide. Afterwards, we added some distilled water to dissolve it. Adding water to sodium hydroxide is generally a bad idea and it should be done the other way around. If you do this, it could lead to boiling, splashing lye everywhere. The first part of the apparatus was now set up. A magnetic stir plate is used and we placed the Erlmeyer flask on top of it. To keep it in place, it was clamped down. The best way to add a liquid to something else, while being able to extract the gas, is to use a pressure equalizing addition funnel. I would probably forget it later, so I close the stopcock right now. This is the first part of our apparatus. We have this addition funnel and a reaction flask. This is the second part of our apparatus. We have this simple flask on a magnetic stirrer and the flask will later on be submerged in an ice bath. A gas tube was connected to the first part of the apparatus. Once everything has been set up, I decided to drastically change the setup. I switched out the round button flask which I wanted to use before for this gas washing bottle because I thought that it might be even more efficient. The DMF was added to the pressure equalizing addition funnel and we set up an ice bath for the gas washing bottle. To start off, we only had to do one thing. Magnetic steering was turned on and we opened the stopcock. I didn't assume that we would be able to see an immediate gas generation because dimethylamine is highly soluble in water and therefore it will stay in solution at first, but I also didn't assume that we would have to crank up the hot plate to 120 degrees Celsius before we saw any gas generation. Good mixing is crucial for this preparation, so we kept our spirits up and hoped for the best. The first bubbles that came over didn't dissolve. Why? Well, there's probably still air and the apparatus needs to be purged. At some moment we will get a lot of product and the bubbles will start to dissolve. The moment it looked like no more bubbles came over, the entire apparatus was probably already filled with dimethylamine. It doesn't look like any product is coming over, but don't be deceived by it. This is dimethylamine. It dissolves. It is highly soluble in water and therefore the bubbles won't even rise to the top. Once even more product was being produced, it became even more obvious. Look at these bubbles. They dissolve so quickly that they won't even be able to escape the liquid. If you look really closely, you might be even able to see some liquid dimethylamine in the glass tube. Dimethylamine starts to boil at 70 degrees Celsius and this means that some of it might actually liquefy in this bottle because of the ice bath. The volume of liquid in the washing bottle increased rather quickly. It is important to carefully supervise this preparation. Towards the end of it, the dimethylamine is going to be sucked back through the tube. No more dimethylamine gas is being produced and therefore the liquid won't be pushed down back into the apparatus and will be sucked back into the boiling flask. You can see this right here. The liquid is slowly being sucked into the apparatus. Now we turned off the hot plates because we don't want any further dimethylamine to be produced and we removed the hose. Dimethylamine is still being produced and you shouldn't inhale it and therefore put on a gas mask. We are still working in a very well ventilated area. After drying the gas washing bottle, it was weighed again. In the end, we ended up with 42.2 grams of dimethylamine, which represents a yield of 93.6%. I accidentally added more water than plants, but I took it into calculation. Our solution of dimethylamine has a concentration of 37.8%. It was quickly transferred to a storage bottle and the bottle was labeled appropriately. There you go, this is how you make dimethylamine solution in water. I also already talked about the other way to make dimethylamine hydrochloride and I decided to try it anyways. So here you go. This time we used about 77 milliliters of DMF, 
about 90 milliliters of 37% hydrochloric acid and 20 milliliters of distilled water. We began by measuring out the DMF and using the same cylinder we measured out the water and the hydrochloric acid. We can see a lot of fumes being produced and this is probably already some of our product. A reflex was set up and heating and stirring were then turned on. To ensure complete hydrolysis of the DMF we refluxed for 5 entire hours. During this time the DMF should hydrolyze to form formic acid and dimethylamine which later on reacts to form dimethyl ammonium chloride. The moment the 5 hours have passed the hot plate was turned off and we allowed it to cool back down to room temperature. This clear liquid now contains our product, distilled water, hydrochloric acid and formic acid. It was transferred to a crystallizing dish which was then put into a desiccator filled with sodium hydroxide. I'm going to leave it in the desiccator until we are left with some nice white crystals. Here we are two months later and there are no nice white crystals. The dimethylamine hydrochloride really loves water and if I wanted to dry it I would have to use phosphorus pentoxides but it's not worth it. I decided to make an hydrous dimethylamine from it so I weighed out 80 grams of sodium hydroxide which is a huge overkill. First only a small batch of sodium hydroxide was added followed by cooling down the flask in an ice bath. A few minutes later an accident happens and we were left with this so let me tell you what happened. I ended up adding just a little bit of sodium hydroxide followed by swirling around the Ormeyer flask and because it didn't heat up I decided to add even more and this is where everything went wrong. It decided to heat up quickly and all of the dimethylamine just made a huge cloud and dissipated into the atmosphere and well this is not good for our yields. In theory we could have obtained 45 grams of anhydrous dimethylamine but I'll be happy with what we made today which is a lot of dimethylamine solution which we are going to use in future projects. If you want to support my channel make sure to check out my Patreon, I have a link down in the description.